if I could. Thank you. Now, uh, other uh, new business. Obviously, uh, there's some folks here who brought up some topics that I'm sure members would want to bring up as well. Um, one of them is Mr. Moot, and uh, on the broader topic of of code enforcement. I, I had a couple of thoughts on that because I just learned this evening about his driving, um, which obviously is a matter of great concern at any time of the year, but on the eve of school opening, it's even worse. My understanding um, is that he was cited for unlicensed operation. Mm -hmm. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And my understanding is that he had to leave his car on the curb and then promise not to drive it. What would be the procedure if he were caught again? If you want to use the mic, Chief, you're more than welcome. Or if any of us were in a similar circumstance. I'll speak to the broader uh, anybody that is that is stopped. If if the vehicle is in a legal spot and we don't have some exigent circumstance to tow it, it's not towed. Um, my understanding of the events over the weekend was gentleman was cited the vehicle was legally parked on a city street and uh, the officer watched the vehicle for approximately half hour uh, at which no time did he return I understand it has been moved now I believe to the Washington Street Plaza that's private property the city the, the police don't regulate who can park there but uh, if he's caught again obviously uh, you start the building blocks uh, he could be held on police cash bail for the for the violation, at which time he would appear in city court the following morning. Um, I can't speak for the judge, but uh, I would find it hard to believe that he would be incarcerated at that point after initial arraignment. Mm -hmm. um, but well, but every circumstance, you know, can be. Well, how about this? Weighed. For starters, we obviously, when you pull someone over, you knew you know who their insurance carrier is. I know he, they have a three-digit number right. that assigns them to an insurance carrier. I, I suspect the carrier would be, if, if they were informed that the policyholder and registrant of the car were an unlicensed operator and had been cited for such, they might want to reconsider whether they want to hold that pot of society and, and, and in this case it isn't a question of just some trash it's a question of of behavior that poses some threat uh, should he be out on the roads and hit somebody granted any of us could run somebody over but uh, I would suggest that it might be a good idea to inform his carrier as quickly as possible uh, of our suspicions and of, of what he's been cited for and uh, and investigate other ways that we can uh, you know, terminate his driving. I mean, he, it's clearly being done to, you know, to thumb his I nose. I think at the things. person that could maybe direct us to do that would be the city court judge. I am not. I have never known us to be contacting people's insurance company. If it's legal to do it, I will comply. But I, I don't know whether uh, that is uh, well, legal or not. I mean, it, it, if you if you have information that. You know, why wouldn't they want to know that? I would, if I was insuring somebody. I, I would want to know it also. I'm just not positive that we have the legal authority to do that. I will find out. Mr. Mayor, I, I agree we need to do something with this, but if we take his insurance off, and they take his insurance off, and he decides to just keep on driving, and he hits someone, who's going to take care of that bill? Well, I if, think if he if he continues to drive without insurance, that steps it up uh, to another level of crime. That's an unclassified misdemeanor. Uh, that obviously makes it more serious than simply not being licensed. Well, what do you think, Mr. Sly? I mean, would you take that step? I, I, I think I it's a risky step myself. But. My opinion: it's not uh, the city's function to be calling insurance carriers. People become unlicensed all the time for many reasons. Their licenses get suspended for not paying parking tickets or whatever. And it happens that people, and DMV does not let you know. I know this for a fact. And, but yet they're still insured when they're driving. And the goal is to make sure that at least there is insurance for the event uh, that you're discussing, Mr. Mayor. I, I have a question for the Chief. 
At what point does it step up to aggravated unlicensed operation, Chief? Once, once there's a conviction for the, the unlicensed. We have a couple weeks, we have a couple weeks before his first appearance in, in Watertown City Court. At knowing his past history and, and understanding how city court works, I'm assured that because he could face the, the potential of 15 days in jail, he will be assigned the public defender. My experience with this is you're looking probably 45 days minimum for this to get some type of resolution. And if somebody so chooses, this could go on for months. Not, not at the police hand. Our, our job has been done. We wrote the citation. What happens if in the meantime, before he goes to court, he drives that car and you stop him again, does it? He will be cited again. I had a conversation about this late this afternoon. I called the on-duty supervisor, advised them that there was more reports of him driving. I said that under the circumstances, if they had reasonable cause to tow the vehicle, they were directed to do that. But it's a citation offense. That's how we've always handled it. And that's how we would handle, handle anybody, any, any citizen of the city of Watertown or driving in our city, they would receive the citation. I mean, I don't know if he's still driving. Yesterday I saw him walking up on the top of Washington Street. He might be living in that motel up there. City, the former City Line Motel. I wasn't aware until this evening that he was driving or that he had been cited over the weekend. I would, I would suggest that given the, and this has been pointed out by Mr. Sly, this is a circumstance that defies conventional legislating, but I would suggest some consultation with the DA or something as well as to how far you can go as to whether or not this is an, you know, if there's anything beyond V&T law that he, that if he is picked up again, whether it's endangering the welfare or something like that. I mean, I don't. Once he's, once he appears in city court, the city court could, a judge could make, could order him not to drive in being a lawful order. Then you, then we might be able to look at contempt. I heard, I heard two weeks ago that you use laws to, you know, enforce the, the building code. And I, I understand that you don't use it, the laws to change someone's behavior. And once again, I think we're trying to use the V&T law to change a human being's mindset. And, you know, we will, we will always do our job. We will enforce the law as we're prescribed to do. But taking those extra steps, I just think we leave our, the city of Watertown open for possibly potential of a lawsuit that we violated someone's rights because it's not something that is in our, the scope of our duties, I don't believe. Well, did he lose his license before? That's why he has a permit now? If, I'm going by memory here. I believe there's a motor vehicle accident at which time the police investigated it. They did a motor vehicle referral. That is where we most likely, because of advanced age, requested that he be retested. He was either scheduled for another test and failed it or didn't show. But upon having his license taken away, he reapplied for a permit, which is legal to do. And he has a permit, I believe, valid till 2009, which means that if he has a licensed driver, he's good to go. But if he doesn't have a licensed driver? He's an unlicensed operator. Right. And that's what's likely going to happen. I doubt anyone's going to get in the car with him. And when someone does have a permit like he does, they can be stopped numerous times and be cited as if there's no end game of that sort of thing? Yes. They're going to go to court. I mean, each time he's spotted. But once again, our job is to write the ticket, send it to court, and it's up to the judge to decide his punishment. 